hello it's thursday for you still it's friday for me so i'm getting through my morning routine trying to figure out what how to make the best use of my time today at work um yesterday my husband and child went to check out a kindergartner ho kindergarten hopefully my son gets into kindergarten here we're hoping we're praying we're doing all this stuff um we practice cr a christmas song with my spanish class and my uh humanities class they worked on their service proposals and i had my last official learning support meeting uh which is the term used here for special education services um, and like IEPs and stuff like that. So that was my last officially on the book scheduled meeting for the school year, technically. Um, what that means is that it kind of opens up my time to support students in the day to day a little bit more. Um, yeah, which will be exciting. Um, let me tell you how much geometry I'm learning, though I don't really know if I'm learning and learning it. I for sure learn it in the moment so I can explain it to students and I'm trying to like retain it. So there's a lot going on in my brain. Um, so that was nice. I got home around five. We'll know a little bit earlier. Usually I get home around five, but yesterday I got home maybe like 4.55, but still it's it was before five. Um, yeah, and then like we didn't do anything. I tried to watch the Great British Bake Off, like the Christmas episode, like four times. The first two times my kids watched through it and they were like, yeah, we love this. And I was just like distracted. And then we went to sleep and then I tried to watch it again. And then I fell asleep. So I'm gonna try to watch it again today. I did finish the movie Love Hard, which was, it took me the whole movie to realize that Love Hard is actually a mashup between Love Actually and Die Hard, the movies, because that's like the favorite movies of the characters in the TV, in the movie. And I'm just kind of like, oh, wow, this is kind of corny. It was funny, though. Uh, I don't know. It was weird. It was like. You know, it was a Christmas movie. Like, what what do I expect from it? Probably not a lot. So, for what it is, it was fine. And then I went to sleep. And now I'm here, a Friday, in the future. Um. Oh, I also got Studio Ghibli tickets. Woo! I'm so excited. Uh, we're gonna go. Um, they're really hard to get because of COVID. And um, I think usually, but because of COVID, they have like limited amounts of tickets and you have to buy them a week in advance. And they're doing that because of COVID measures. So like if they have to close down, they don't want to like have to refund you all the stuff, right? So, um, but they're extremely difficult to get for the weekends. And Japanese holidays, I think start the 19th, like that Friday is like the last day I think for them before Christmas or like a week of break that they get or something like that. And our last day before break is the 15th. So I got them for the 16th, um, which is a Thursday and I got them, I got them and I was like, wow, I'm glad I chose that day because I think any day after that would have been a no-go because they just like sell out so quickly. Uh, there was one time I had them in my cart and was about to pay and they were like, nope, they're gone. And I was like, great. And this was right at 10 a.m. when they go on sale. So <clears throat> I got those. And yeah, that's that's basically my Thursday. I wish I recorded more footage, but I can't really like record my work. Like that's not appropriate. I, I even record this like way before I have to go to work and I try to post it way before my contracted hours too. 
Um, so I can't do that and I can't record my kids um, faces. I try not to because of privacy. They really, uh, my kids say no a lot and that's okay. I appreciate them being like, I don't wanna be on camera. Um, and also like, even if they did say yes, I would probably be really careful. And also like, I don't know if people just wanna watch me walk down the street to work. Like, um, but I do try to record when there's some stuff that's happening that's appropriate and um, yeah, I don't know. I think weekends are easier. So this weekend uh, is 11, 12. So I'll definitely have a few things that we're gonna do that are free, free is my favorite. Uh, yeah, cause you know, teacher over here. Anyway, but I did wanna share like, why Why did I call myself Guatemala? So I am a Guatemalan, uh, I'm also an American and I'm a mom. So we just decided to call me Guatemala. Um, but I have been digging into my uh, ethnic background, I guess, and trying to be for a while now. So this is a new, um, and more, more and more relatives have popped up on the DNA website. So I am starting to learn that <clears throat> where most of my kind of background is coming from, because I don't actually have a lot of information from my dad's side. I mean, I guess I could ask people, but I'm, I have like okay relationships with uh, people on my dad's side, but not like deep ones versus my mom's side where I have more relationships and have more information. So <clears throat> as a Guatemalan, I actually pretty recently have like uh, Spanish ancestry, like my great grandmother and her husband, my great grandfather, I never met him, uh, when they gave birth to my grandma, right? Uh, they were Spanish immigrants and Therefore, my grandma is technically, <laughs> she's technically Guatemalan, right? But she's like Spanish. And then, so that that whole side is pretty much accounted for. And then my grandpa's side, like my mom, like the person who married my grandma, that grandma, uh, I don't have a lot of information on him. I've been looking through records and I haven't found his name. And then, but I do have specific towns that show up on my ancestry that, relate to what I actually know, right? Where I'm looking for records, so that's kind of cool. And then on my dad's side, I'm noticing a lot more indigenous heritage. I'm trying to figure out that side. Um, I'm hoping I get answers from my mom's DNA test and so that I can explore a little bit more. So anyway, all that to say is that being Guatemalan to me has shifted over the last 10 years. like. It no longer feels like I am Latina, I, though I am, right? So in, in some ways I am, but it, now it feels more like this mixture of indigenous and African and Spanish that feels more real to me. Like Latina is so broad and it has never felt like it fit for me in that sense. Um, but now that I'm kind of looking through the details I can see how the term could cover all of that and also like it doesn't necessarily cover how I see myself or my family history I feel like it's easier to use American language right for me it's easier to say that I'm mixed race at this point because I am instead of saying like oh I'm from I'm Latina um, I've also had to come to terms with Spanish and English both being colonizing languages. So that's been really uh, difficult for me um, because honestly, um, what I wouldn't give to know the indigenous language of um, the people that I am a descended from pretty recently, like yeah like how sad is it that i i don't know that language um though it's nice to know the language that 
my great grandmother and great grandfather spoke right directly that's the language they knew so that feels a little bit more um meaningful spanish now feels meaningful in that way because there's more of a direct connection and then english um yeah i mean that's the language i had to learn right <laughs> to survive so anyway all that to say uh, that is why I call myself Guatemala. It felt like the most neutral term for where I'm at. I don't know. I think too much about this. Like, I want to know. And for a long time, I didn't know. And now that I know a lot more about um, my great-great-grandparents and stuff like that, it feels like I have a real connection to um, the cultures that I am a part of. All right, well, I don't know what to say now. That was like a really long video. So uh, I'll post the two clips that I have this week. Hopefully I already posted them, but all right, adios. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad.